Hello, I am Professor S. Shankaran in the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. So, the concept of strain, uh, how the strain is defined, is a linear average strain that just like uh, just now we have seen that. So, it is always uh, useful to define the strain as a change in linear dimension by the instantaneous value of the dimension rather than this uh, average strain which is expressed epsilon uh, is equal to integral limits over L naught by L f d L by L which is equal to ln L f upon L naught. So, this is a natural strain or true strain. So, the change in length also result in change in initial angle between the two lines. So, uh, the angular change in the right angle is known as shear strain. So, the linear dimension what we have uh, looked at for a deform as a deformation can also involve this uh, change in angle. Okay. For example, if you take this square and uh, the these two dotted lines makes an angle um, with respect to this face. So, this shear is measured uh, by the displacement A divided by the H, which is nothing but a tangent, okay, which is nothing but a tangent. The shear strain gamma is equal to the displacement A divided by the distance between the planes H. The ratio a by h the tangent of the angle through which the element has been rotated. So, the message is uh, the strain need not just be a linear uh, displacement, it can also involve a sh shear okay, or change in angles which is a shear strain. Okay. So, this is again a convention. So, which is uh, shear strain is denoted by gamma is equal to A by h is equal to tan theta. So, uh, having introduced the notations of the stress and strain, uh, we will now uh, focus uh, our uh, idea on uh, description of stress at a point. So, how do we uh, describe the stress at a point? So, this is uh, a cube and um, which has got uh, you know the length delta x, delta y and delta z, the height. And you, you, you have seen, you are seeing that uh, there are so many components of the stress is uh, uh, denoted in this cube. So, x, y, z is a partition coordinate and as I just mentioned in the previous slides. Uh, a norm, a total stress always, uh, you know, it, it is convenient to uh, resolve into uh, a total stress into normal stress and a shear stress, right. So, uh, you need, uh, that is how, that is what it is uh, shown in each of this phase. For example, you have this uh, sigma y and sigma x and sigma z they are all normal stresses that is they are perpendicular to the the plane okay this is a, a y plane and this is an x plane and this is an z plane they are normal to this direction this direction and that direction so that is uh, they are called normal stress but if you look at the uh, shear stresses there are two shear stresses on each plane, like I just mentioned before, two shear stresses and uh, why there are uh, two subscripts in uh, shear stresses, but in the case of uh, normal stresses only one subscript is given. It is, uh, it is, it is understood that this normal stress act perpendicular to this plane, right. So, so, sigma y means a normal stress acting perpendicular to this plane y, 
right here. On the other hand, if you have two shear stresses, you need two subscripts because we need to know first of all where this shear stress lies. So that means the, the, the first subscript denotes it lies in the y plane and uh, the second subscript uh, shows that it is which direction. Right? For example, if you if you take this tau y is that the, the shear stress is in the y plane that is first one and the direction is x. Right? So similarly, you take this, this is an z plane but the direction is y. Okay. You take this shear stress, it is in the z plane. So, first is first subscript is z, it is in this x direction. So, zx. So, you need two subscripts to denote, uh, describe a shear stress. Um, this is a mistake, it should be x. So, um, for describing a normal stress, uh, you can uh, denote it by sigma x or sigma y and sigma z and so on. So, this is about the description about uh, normal stress and shear stress. But we are talking about uh, description of a stress at a point. So, so what it this uh, diagram suggests is to describe a stress at a point, you need almost a nine components of stress. That is what it it describes, it gives you a clue. Okay. If you are interested in a stress at a point, you need minimum of 9 components. right? So, in this geometry, we have uh, taken a cube as a uh, volume element. Um, so, 9 quantities, quantities must be defined in order to establish the state of stress at a point. By assuming the change in the stress over the phase is negligible due to small size, it can be shown that tau x is equal to tau y x. Thus, the state of stress at a point is completely described by 6 components. So, if you assume this, you know, identities, then the 9 becomes 6 components to describe the stress, out of which 3 are normal stresses and 3 are shear stresses which are sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, tau x y, tau x z and tau um, y z, some, something is wrong there. Yeah. So, so that is how it is uh, described. So, now we are now slowly concentrating on description. And we should also know the uh, description of uh, sign convention. So, how, um, for example, if you look at this uh, diagram A, uh, the shear stresses are shown. So, and this type of notation are, uh, are termed as the positive shear stress. Mm, okay. So, you can, you can understand this diagram, it is like this. So, you have the uh, element like this and the shear stress act on this. So, it comes like this. So, it is, a, it is forcing like this and this, this element will force this. So, this way it cycles. So, it is counterbalancing both directions, right. So, like that. So, it is in the positive side. So, it is in the positive axis. So, similarly, here it is the negative. So, shear stress, these notations uh, are useful when you uh, try to do some calculations or uh, describe the, you know, state of stress and then try to calculate a transformation of stress all these things are useful. So, this, these are some of the basics uh, we need to know. So, uh, what, what we are now going to do is, um, we are interested in uh, finding out uh, a stress at a point, we are going to describe in a three dimension. But before we go into three dimension, 
we will first look at them in two dimensions or a plane stress. Okay. This is also useful because uh, later we will describe that most, uh, most of the uh, comp complicated problems uh, which is being uh, solved with the two dimensional assumption, then it is much more simpler to solve. That is called plane stress problem or plane strain problem. But in this case, before we go to three dimensional description of uh, stress uh, or looking at a stress tensor, we will start with uh, a state of stress in two dimension. Okay. And, um, and before uh, we go, go there, we are also going to consider the stress transformation, right. That means, the stress on oblique plane. It is not that we are going to describe um, a stress at a fixed coordinates or fixed position. So, we would also would like to look at the stress uh, at a point and it influence, you know, suppose if it changes the orientation from one coordinates to other, how it will have the effect. The effect of orientation also will, has to be accounted for. That is why we take the stress transformation. Okay. So, if you take a stress on an oblique plane, any arbitrary oriented oblique plane and then how uh, it will uh, worked out to be including the orientation effect. So, that is what it is uh, going to be described in this. So, before I read, uh, look at this, let us take this kind of uh, uh, geometry where you have this uh, square uh, which is subjected to biaxial loading. That is why we say that it is a plane stress, right. So, sigma xx, sigma yy and uh, tau xy and tau yx uh, and tau x, y, y, x here. So, this is again a positive uh, shear stress just I showed before and uh, which is there in the normal Cartesian coordinate x and y. This is a reference coordinate coordinates and uh, suppose if you uh, tilt this whole configuration into some other angle. So, then uh, that angle can be theta. So, the x will become x prime and y will become y prime. Then what will happen to this uh, geometry? This also will get rotated. Okay. So, um, so, in order to describe this uh, uh, state of stress, let us consider the wedge. Wedge is this. So, we are going to cut a, a wedge which is denoted the dotted line here measured anti-clockwise, this is measured anti-clockwise, let because this is what the rotation is, so it should be anti-clockwise. Uh, let area of phase AB is DA, so AB, this is area line is DA, then the vertical phase is DA cos theta. So, the we are going to, we are going to consider this AB, this is an oblique plane. So, if you look at this projection, it is um, this vertical is this, this is a vertical phase, this is d a cos theta and an area of the horizontal, this, this portion is d a sin theta. Okay. So, this is, this is an assumption. So, now we will uh, describe them just uh, the wedge portion itself. So, that is just a cut and then put it here for convenience. So, you can look at the coordinates much more simpler here. So, what you are seeing here is uh, this is a new uh, phase and uh, sigma x prime x prime that is uh, double x I mean prime is uh, a normal stress uh, to this oblique plane and this is a uh, shear stress tau x prime y prime acting on this. And uh, rest all the same, uh, only thing is what I have just uh, given here is uh, we are interested in uh, look at the force equilibrium in x prime and y prime direction. So, we are looking at this direction and this direction of the rotation, right. So, we are going to look at the force equilibrium in this new orientation and for that we are getting ready with this uh, description uh, like this. So, this is uh, uh, what we have described is d a cos theta is the area of the vertical portion and uh, 
da sin theta is the horizontal area of the horizontal ob and oa so the sigma x this direction multiplied by this area will give the force that's what it is so that is very easy to calculate the uh, force if you just write it like this it's easy so this is a normal stress and multiplied by area will give the force corresponding to this a uh, shear stress multiplied by the area give the corresponding force shear force normal force shear force shear force and a normal force this direction and this direction but we are interested in this uh, a rotated an oblique plane and we are now trying to calculate the force equilibrium based on this particular plane so how are you going to do it so that is what we have to uh, look at it so there is no uh, confusion here don't get uh, confused uh, you can look at this geometry once again uh, for your convenience i have put all of them in the different color so that it directly gives the force so when you say that uh, the object is in a static equilibrium then that net force is zero right so that's what we are going to uh, do okay so again uh, i'll bring that geometry for your convenience so we are going to look at this uh, uh, total force net force we are going to uh, assume that as zero and then we are going to write that what are all the total force uh, pertaining to this uh, direction right we are going to look at this and this is a convention uh, sign convention what we have just talked so now let us look at this equation sigma x prime x prime da is a force which is acting on this that is this is the normal force i said and this area is ab a ab plane is da so this is a force that is positive because we are looking at this direction at minus uh, sigma xx da cos theta that means uh, the as i said that the projection of this is vertical and this force is negative because you are looking at this direction so negative sign sigma xx da cos theta uh, stressed into area is a force but then this additional cos theta comes because of this orientation uh, we have to take care of that right so sigma x da cos theta cos theta minus this sigma y this component which is uh, is a negative again because it is this orientation minus y y da sin theta and we are looking at this direction sin theta and this is again what is x y is again negative minus tau x y da cos theta sin theta and this is minus y x da sin theta cos theta so if you if you if you just uh, write this one line equation by uh, looking at this diagram uh, then everything will be clear you don't have to worry about it right first time uh, just for your own practice to gain a confidence you do it of your own and then look at these results then it is easy okay otherwise it will it may look complicated but look at the geometry first what are the descriptors look at them carefully and then try to write of your own then it is easy since i have just typed it here it may look very simple also but when you sit and write you may get confused so you try to practice this then it is easy so once you have written this it is uh, straight forward after that everything is uh, very simple steps so it's basically rearrangement sigma x prime x prime is equal to sigma xx cos square theta and the sigma y y sin square theta and 2 tau x y sin theta cos theta and then we have removed da which is common for both sides so this now uh, a simple trigonometric identity you can just bring in so cos square theta can be replaced with this 1 plus cos 2 theta by 2 and sin square theta can be replaced by 1 minus cos 2 theta by 2 and uh, sin theta cos theta is replaced by sin 2 theta by 2. So now um, we have um, uh, the equation. So 
sigma x prime x prime is equal to sigma x x plus sigma y y by 2 plus sigma x x minus sigma y y by 2 and cos cos 2 theta plus tau x y sin 2 theta just by rearranging this okay. So, this is one uh, first equation uh, of normal stress with arbitrary orientation. So, if you that what what does it mean? That means if you have if you want to find out the normal stress in a oblique plane, if you know the theta, plug in the theta values, you will get the normal stress value. So now similarly, we are interested in uh, shear stress. So we will look at in the y direction. That means sigma uh, y prime direction. That is uh, tau x prime y prime here. So similarly, you just uh, look at uh, all the components here. So, here tau x y x prime y prime d a. This is a force, the shear force in this oblique plane. So, that is positive and now you see plus sigma x x d a cos theta sin theta because we are looking at this component, this direction which is this component. So, that is positive here and then minus rest all remaining same here because uh, this component which is affecting are in, uh, coming to this direction minus y y d a sin theta cos theta and minus tau x y d a cos theta cos theta. So, so, rest all the same the this one and this one is the same orientation, but the tau y x d a sin theta and sin theta which is again changing the direction similar to uh, normal stress. So, this is another equation. Um, uh, you have to just uh, uh, look at this geometry and then write, then it is easy. So, similar to this, this is uh, got uh, one equation, then we can replace that or rearrange that with uh, uh, common factors you remove and then you rewrite this and, uh, and final expression can be tau x prime y prime is equal to minus sigma x x minus sigma y y by 2 sin 2 theta plus tau x y cos 2 theta. So, this is uh, another uh, shear stress equation. Uh, similar to this normal stress, if you plug in this uh, 2 theta value in an arbitrary plane or uh, member, uh, you will get the uh, shear stress. You know? And similar to sigma x prime uh, x prime, uh, you can also do the same thing for sigma y y it will also uh, similar expression you will get. So, these three equations are the uh, fundamental equations from, uh, from, from where we can just uh, build up uh, uh, to find out all type of uh, stresses and orientation effects we can correlate. Mm -hmm. So, this equation, this particular uh, type of derivation is quite useful if you practice by yourself. And uh, we will now just look at uh, some description about this. So, the above equations describe the normal stress and the shear stress on any plane through a point in a body subjected to a plane stress situation. So, it is a stress transformation in 2D or a, a description of a stress at a point you know an oblique plane with uh, you know uh, with the two dimension whatever you call it, but it is a plane stress situation. Right. So, we, we are talking about sigma x and sigma y, it is a plane stress situation. So, uh, it is interesting to note this uh, graph and how this, uh, for example, if you look at this uh, similar uh, geometry what I have drawn, suppose if you assume this uh, a biaxial situation, the, it is uh, here sigma x and sigma y has got some specific values. So, in order to appreciate uh, what this graph is showing. So, the sigma x is equal to 80 MPa and sigma y is equal to 10 MPa and shear stress is minus 10 MPa. So, it is plotted on this graph. Uh, this is a normal stress or shear stress tau uh, versus the orientation. So, all that we have now looked at uh, is uh, how this, uh, you know, uh, stress in a 2D uh, will have an effect of theta that is orientation or transformation whatever we call it. So, this gives an, uh, an 
a clear uh, demonstration how it looks like. So, what, what is that we are seeing here? So, the figure shows the variation of normal stress and shear stress with theta for a biaxial plane stress situation given at the top of the figure. So, this is a figure we are referring to. The maximum and minimum values of normal stress on the oblique plane through the point O occurs when the shear stress is 0. So, what does it mean? How, how What are we seeing here? So, shear stress is 0 is here. So, this is where the maximum and the minimum values of normal stress on an oblique plane. Okay. So, the maximum and the minimum it happens here. Okay. So, this is 0 and this is 0 that is what it says maximum and minimum normal stresses on an oblique plane through point O occur when shear stress is 0. So, shear stress is 0 here and here. Okay. So, the maximum and minimum values of both normal stress and shear stress occur at an angle which is which are 90 degree apart. So, the maximum and minimum values of both normal and uh, shear stress. So, uh, normal and shear stress maximum and minimum maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum, the interval is 90 degree that is what it says. So, the maximum shear stress occurs at an angle halfway between the minimum and uh, uh, yeah, minimum normal stresses. So, this is what it is halfway between the angles, the maximum shear stress halfway between the minimum of normal stresses. Uh, this is minimum and, and should be a maximum normal stresses. So, this is halfway. So, variation of normal stress and shear stress occurs in the form of a sine wave with a period of theta is equal to 180 degree. These relationships are valid for any state of stress. So, this is the sine wave function. So, similarly you will have a sine wave function of this. Okay. So, the another classification is the planes on which the maximum normal stress act and on which no shear stress act are called principal planes. And the stresses normal to these planes are the principal stresses. So, before we get into the uh, much more detailed definition of this. So, let us get into the uh, you know nomenclature of what is principal plane and uh, principal stresses. So, this is uh, a starting point. A planes on which maximum normal stress act and no shear stress are called principal planes. Okay, Something like this, this situation. Shear stress is 0 here and the normal stress will have a maximum. So, this will happen at particular planes. They are those planes are called principal planes, right. And the normal to these planes, they are called principal stresses. So, principal stresses means there is no shear, zero shear stress. So, that is the bottom line you have to, we have to remember always. So, since by definition a principal plane contains no shear stress, its angular relationship with respect to the x y coordinate axis can be determined by finding the values of theta in equation 2 for which tau x prime y prime is equal to 0. So, we have now uh, derived some um, I mean equation which uh, describes the shear stress on a a plane stress situation for an ob oblique plane or arbitrary theta. So, if uh, if you in order to find out the you know angular relationship, if that equation is being made into 0, then we will be having some relations, we, we can develop some relation. What is that? This is the relation we have taken from the previous slides. The If you look at the shear stress expression, this is the same shear stress expression. Then we we are trying to make it equal to 0 and then try to rearrange that. So, if you do this uh, tau x y divided by sigma y minus uh, sigma sigma x minus because it is a sine 
reverse here. So, sigma x minus sigma y is equal to sin theta cos theta divided by cos square theta minus sin square theta which can be written as this ok. Then this is this can be written as half tan 2 theta and this one finally can be written like this tan 2 theta is equal to 2 tau x y divided by sigma x minus sigma y ok. So, this is an angular relationship we are talking about with, uh, with respect to uh, these uh, stresses. Um, Okay, what is uh, what is that uh, I am trying to show here? Equation one. What is equation one? E equation one is sigma x x. Uh, what we have derived in this two uh, D case. If you plug in all the values for cos two theta and sin two theta, then the values uh, uh, it will give the principal stresses, right? Uh, the equation will give the principal stresses. That is sigma one and sigma two, right? Uh, so, how do we find this uh, the value of this? So, we, we, we are seeing this. So, what is this? If we, if we can take from this relation, we can simply uh, okay, one minute. we can also do this. Suppose you assume this as a 2 theta. So, from, so from this relation you will be able to find out what is this right using Pythagoras theorem right. So, so you because of using that relation so you will be able to find uh, uh, sin 2 theta. So, from this equation you put it this and then this is uh, tan 2 theta is 2 uh, tau x y divided by sigma x minus sigma y will give you a simple Pythagoras relation you will get this sin 2 theta is equal to plus or minus tau x y divided by sigma x minus sigma y whole square divided by 4 plus tau square x y to the power half. So, this will be your hypotenuse. So, it comes like this. So, similar equation for cos 2 theta just I am just giving you uh, uh, so that you will you will be able to appreciate from this relationship you will be uh, easily able to derive this using simple uh, mathematics and still appreciate uh, the physical concept they are trying to uh, visualize uh, how do we find this principal stresses in a biaxial situation right so again from using this uh, after substituting this you will this is the final expression you will get uh, from this uh, uh, the original equation. So, that is sigma max and sigma minimum sigma 1 and sigma 2 is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus or minus um, sigma x minus sigma y by 2 whole square plus tau square x y whole to the power half. So, this is the expression for maximum and minimum principal stresses for a two dimensional state of stress. So, what you see here, here is uh, once you uh, get into the grip of getting the uh, common equation uh, and it is very easy to plug in the values of theta and then arrive at some expression for uh, principal stress. Uh, it may look the equation look very complicated, but if you just sit and work it, work it out you will not find it difficult. The most important point is you will you will get the physical picture you No, know, you should keep that uh, physical uh, you know the dimensions everything in mind and then uh, it will it will it will be very easy to grasp this ok. Ok. What we can do is now um, this what is this figure? This figure shows uh, a shear stresses which is a, a negative shear stress and this is a shear diagonal and this sigma s is a normal stress and sigma y again a normal stress. Suppose if you want to uh, get an idea of how to establish the uh, sigma 1 right how, how do we how do we find the big sigma 1. Figure this figure shows a simple way to establish the direction of 
a largest principal stress sigma 1 and sigma 1 will lie between algebraically largest normal stress and a shear diagonal. Okay. You see, uh, when we describe this uh, sigma, I mean the state of stress in a 3 dimension, again we will come to this point. Uh, sigma 1 is uh, the largest principal stress and then sigma 2 and then sigma 3, right. And uh, the maximum shear stress will occur at 45 here, right, 45 degree. Mm. And then when you, when the sigma 1 has uh, 0 shear stress, then it becomes uh, sigma x normal stress, right, that is principal stress. If there is 0 shear stress, it is uh, principal stress and then it is a pure shear here. To see this intuitively, consider that if there is no shear stresses, then sigma x becomes sigma 1, that is what I am saying. Suppose if you say sigma x does not have a shear stress, then it becomes sigma 1. If only shear stress act on the normal stress, that is principal stress would exist along the shear. If the principal stress itself a pure shear, then it is only on the diagonal, right. So, if both normal stress and shear stress act on the element, then sigma 1 lies between the influence of these two effects. So, this is a very nice way of looking at it. If both normal and shear stress act on an element, so it has to, it has to lie somewhere in between, right. So, because it has got both the components, uh, whether normal, uh, it, it will be a normal stress here at, as well as a shear component, right, somewhere. If it is not pure shear, it is not pure uh, principal stresses, but somewhere in between, okay. If the both normal and shear stress act on an element, then sigma 1 lies between the influences of these two effects. So, that is the effect I wanted to show in this uh, image. So, uh, here again uh, sigma x is greater than sigma y, like you know sigma 1 is greater than sigma 2 than sigma 3, something like that. So, so this image clearly shows the how to visualize uh, the sigma 1 uh, or how to visualize the sigma when a body is subjected to both normal stress and shear stress, okay. I think we will stop here and uh, we will continue uh, the discussion on this uh, stresses and their derivation um, in the next class. So what I uh, would like to tell you before I wind up, uh, so these uh, geometries and the equations unless you uh, practice uh, of your own it will it will be difficult so you just go through these slides because uh, in in a ppt it, it may appear so simple so but i'm not saying that it is difficult or something it is elementary only but the point is you have to practice by yourself after going through this you try to practice yourself then it is easy okay thank you